Pope Francis has wrapped up an arduous 12-day tour over the Asia-Pacific uh, region. Over a less than two weeks, the 87-year-old visited Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and Singapore. The pontiff, who in recent years has suffered bouts of ill health, appeared in good form throughout the trip, maintaining a packed schedule and headlining more than 40 different events. For more, let's speak to Massimo Fagioli, a church historian and professor of theology at Villanova University in Philadelphia. Hello to you, and thank you for speaking to Paris Direct. Um, why at the age of 87 is Pop, Pope Francis going on his longest trip in terms of duration and distance? I think for two reasons. The first one is that the pivot to Asia is really a marker of Pope Francis' pontificate. Asia is the future of the globe, and in some sense is the future of the Catholic Church. And the second reason is that many in these last couple of years had said that Pope Francis' pontificate was almost over, there was going to be a resignation or a succession soon, and this trip demonstrates otherwise, because Pope Francis has done an incredibly challenging trip from a physical point of view, uh, very different countries, different contexts, and it, it has been, from his point of view, uh, a, a success, I think. A success, but do you expect another trip like this from the pontiff? Well, as long and as challenging as this one, it is hard to say, because it's hard to imagine another trip like this. Of course, this trip was tiptoeing around China, which is the biggest dream of Pope Francis and of all popes in these last 30 years. Uh, there's another trip coming up very soon in Belgium. And so this pontificate uh, has slowed down on some issues for some aspects, but not for his trips, which is where Pope Francis is at his best, usually. Yeah, you mentioned the focus of the church uh, in Asia, obviously. No um, formal ties between the Vatican and uh, China, but should we expect perhaps a rapprochement? Well, there has been already since 2018, because there's been this famous agreement that has to be renewed every two years, and the next time is in October, on the appointment of bishops. So there has been a rapprochement, but everything is very fragile. China is rising and is treating the Vatican as a foreign power, not just as religion. And so that adds a level of complexity that other religions don't have when they deal with China. And another aspect of this, you, were, you alluded to it earlier, was about who might succeed Pope Francis. It's difficult to speculate until we know the, the, the person and their profile. But uh, with the shifting demographics of the Catholic Church and more and more Catholics being found outside of Europe, what do you think the future of policy and terms of the Catholic Church will look like? So this church is certainly more global than it was 10 or 15, 20 years ago. So that is a factor that will be considered by the conclave, I think. But there's another factor, the effects of this pontificate, which has been quite uh, tumultuous, and for many cardinals, way too turbulent. And that will influence the choice of the, of, of the successor. That's why it's imaginable, it's possible that will be a, a European or, or, or even another Italian, which, which might sound counterintuitive when we look at the map of, of Catholicism today. But this pontificate has ruffled the feathers of many cardinals, and so they might look for a more stable, more more predictable uh, candidate. Yeah, and of course, we're overlooking Africa in all of this. Africa has a very quickly a growing Catholic population. And there are hopes that when Francis was appointed that we might even have the first African pope back then. So you don't see anything like that maybe in the foreseeable future, possibly. It's certainly possible. Uh, Africa presents some challenges, for example, for the message of Pope Francis on LGBT Catholics, gay Catholics, uh, most, if not all, prelates from Africa are quite on a different page on this issue. And electing a pope from Africa might send mixed messages on one of the most important challenges of the Catholic Church, being more inclusive with two gay Catholics. Uh, and that is something that will be considered, I think, by those who will make that choice. All right, Massimo, thank you very much for your time. Massimo Fagioli speaking to us there. Thank you. Thank you very much.